Um, yeah, hold your questions for now. Let's move to our three discussants. Uh, Yurendra, would you like to kick off? Thank you. Um, thank you, Andy. Um, let me start um, by just outlining. Um, I, I'm going to probably just make three key comments. One is on Liz's excellent paper, um, and then link it with uh, what we've been doing at ODI, um, and then probably conclude with some, some thoughts. Um, as Andy started off, uh, we've got an ongoing research program on Aid for Trade, and we've been looking at uh, uh, aid for trade program, what what makes it work, uh, in what circumstances, um, which has been funded by Gates Foundation, um, which, uh, and there's a working paper out there on the ODI <coughs> website, uh, which does a, a broad sweep of the evidence out there. Um, we are also doing um, more focused thematic uh, research uh, this year, and we hope to release uh, that uh, output uh, in the next few months. Um, we've also done a short briefing paper drawing on the larger working paper um, on key some of the key issues that we think matters in aid for trade. So my, my comments are going to broadly draw on those, so if I miss out something, you can go back to the ODI website. Um, I think what Liz has done is she's zoomed us into a very important aspect of aid for trade, which is monitoring and evaluation, and I think, uh, if I may, a lot still needs to be done, and in that, Liz has definitely thrown some light. Uh, there are lots of issues around uh, monitoring and evaluating aid for trade, um, and in that, I think, Liz, uh, the issues that she's raised are very valid. Um, I had the chance to speak to her slightly before the presentation, because even our working paper, which looks at these issues, come to very similar findings, and I thought that maybe we may have plagiarized each <laughs> other's. Uh, but it seemed we did not, because I did not know Liz that well before we released the paper, and we had all sorts of confidentiality issues. So the fact that uh, we both came to similar conclusion means that there is something out there uh, which Liz has presented today, um, uh, and it means something. Um, I think the issue here, what I wanted to do is slightly zoom out a bit before going into the specifics of monitoring and evaluation. Uh, it's quite important, I think, in talking about aid for trade to also keep in mind why or where aid for trade began. And, and it began in 2005, came out of the Hong Kong Ministerial Conference, um, uh, uh, and it was part of the uh, Doha rounds of negotiations. Um, it is not to say that there were no aid-related assistance to this sector of trade before aid for trade. So it, it does not, in a, in a sense, come out of nowhere. It, it is, in many sense, a continuity. Um, but there was, I think, if I may, uh, a real concern that trade issues were quite important. The implications of trade policies would have differential impacts on different countries, and there needed to be a mechanism to support poor developing countries to benefit from these trade negotiations or trade outcomes. Um, broadly, I'm generalizing now, but broadly there were two issues, I think, which were important. One was um, the impact of being in involved in these negotiations. Right? So there could be long-term, medium-term benefits, short-term impacts on different groups within the country. How do you manage that? distributional aspect of being engaged in these trade negotiations. Second, uh, in principle, these negotiations allow you expand your market opportunities, give you better markets for your products. But if you don't have the capacity to produce those goods and supply to these markets, then they don't mean anything. So it was about addressing those supply side constraints. And I think these two things need to be kept in mind. Third, why aid for trade? Because you know you could do on your bilateral level, or you could do the, these assistance were being provided through different measures. And I think what the WTO did was set up a task force to look at what are the areas that matter in this realm. And they came out with a broad uh, general categories of where they where countries felt they need um, support in trade. So I think that's an important context to keep in mind while, while talking about these issues. In our own paper, and I'll return 
back to this uh, later on. But uh, in our own paper, we've looked at the monitoring and evaluation. And I wanted to reflect on a conference that I was uh, a few weeks back at SOAS. And there were two intellectual giants, Gustav Ranes and Eric Tobek, who've worked on issues of economic growth and poverty. And uh, it's quite relevant here because Eric Tobek was talking about how do you go directly in reducing poverty elevation? What sort of programs do you need to do to target the poor? And Gustav Ranes corrected him saying that you can't go directly, it has to be through uh, some sort of a growth mechanism. So there has to be some sort of a transmission mechanism to impact the poor. And, and I must confess that I am likely to be in Gustav Ranes school of thought in what I say for the rest of the um, uh, time I have allocated for, for discussing this. Um, we find, and as Liz has also rightly pointed out, there are serious issues about attribution. So what you invest as aid for trade and what you attribute as outcomes or impacts. So and, and this is because it's very difficult, as Liz rightly points out, to create a uh, results chain or transmission mechanism. Uh, I have myself been included in, uh, in designing an aid for trade program for South Sudan a few years back. And it was about improving customs uh, administration in that country, which was clearly needed uh, because there were multiple custom checkpoints manned by different groups. Uh, revenue wasn't being uh, brought into the government. So there were all these issues. Um, and I was designing the business case for, for, for customs, uh, customs uh, uh, modernization. Now, from improving customs capacity, how do you go to saying this will have a poverty impact? And you know, on the long term, it may, it will, and you can make these uh, assumptions. Uh, but to a large extent, it is a massive leap of faith, or leap of, uh, you know, because there are no readily available data. You don't know um, uh, the, the the data generally is unavailable. So you have that sort of problem. Um, there are also also very difficult issues about how do you quantify results. Um, so even though you may have an impact on the poor, much of it is going to be qualitative. So how do you really quantify that into saying, you know, X group income or some quantitative measure has improved? How do you capture the qualitative aspect? Um, there's also tensions, I think, in, in my opinion, between these two issues. Uh, for instance, uh, Liz and I had a brief chat about this. Um, Trade is about improving the flows of goods, services, investments. Now, if you're working on improving, for instance, a border post, and you reduce the time taken for border crossing from three days to three hours, invariably, lots of informal traders are going to lose their employment in that process. Uh, how do you manage that tension as, as uh, external donors or development practitioners working, working in that uh, uh, sphere? So, so you have these real challenges, which I think needs to be thought through. And this is the point that I was trying to say of zooming out, is um, not at the point of evaluation and uh, monitoring, but at the point of actually designing or thinking about what, what is it that you're going to be um, doing. Um, in, our, in our own work, we've, we've, uh, we've tried to tried to do this um, a short briefing paper with my colleague there, uh, Jakob, uh, where we've tried to sort of unpack or unpiece the different stages of, do of aid for trade cycle. And we've tried to see what are the important constraints in each of those. So from, from, an, from almost a normative level of saying, what is it that you're trying to do? Or what, what, what is it, who are you trying to help? To how do you go about it? to the final stage of monitoring and evaluation. Um, and you can look at that paper, but sticking to the issue of the poor, which is the focus of this discussion, uh, I think it is absolutely important uh, as, an, as an objective. Uh, but you have to be also realistic about what aid for trade can or cannot do. And, 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 it has to, and, and the point that I would like to make is aid for trade is one element of your aid arsenal or your aid package. So it has to work in tandem with the rest <laughs> of your aid program, first of all. Secondly, I think the issue, there's this discussion about 
data not being available or you know who um, in my opinion most of the developing countries have what they call national development plans or poverty reduction strategy papers so you have clearly poverty challenges identified there you can go there and so aid for trade has to be mainstreamed into these development strategies uh, then only you can possibly shorten the leap of faith that Liz was referring to. Um, the third element that I want to, uh, I think that should be looked into is, is when you are, uh, once you've identified, once you've know, done all of this exercise, there also needs to be a clear understanding of how are you going to implement that. And there too you have lots of, I think, it's not just one choice, you have lots of different mechanisms for delivering either you're doing through the government, through the uh, civil society bodies. And there, I think you need to have what Liz has rightly pointed out, a very clear understanding of your social impact assessment. Of what are your likely impacts and what mitigation strategies do you have, uh, have there? I think these are the important elements. Can I just make one sure. final point and sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, wrap up? No problem. Uh, um, the key thing for us mm. in our research is that trade is absolutely vital. And I think, uh, uh, to use the cliche, it is, in a sense, everything. Um, and and uh, you know, uh, we were speaking some time back. Uh, um, I was doing this thing in Namibia. Um, you have these uh, woodwork craftspeople in the villages who bring their craftswork to Windhoek. You have a tourist coming in and purchasing those products. In a sense, that is trade. Assisting countries in the right way to expand their trade, I think <coughs> you have lots of evidence there which shows that it has beneficial impact. Uh, doing it correctly is still, I think, remains a key challenge. And uh, here, for so long, since A for Trade started, it has been public or grants-led. And I think it is time to think about other investments including uh, included in, in, in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yarendra.